Hey guys, Ms. Farron here. So today we're going to look at graphing systems of inequalities. So our learning target is I can graph system of inequalities. We looked at graphing inequalities back in Unit 1, so the difference of this is going to be we're talking about graphing systems. And when I talk about graphing a systems, a system is a set of two or more inequalities now on the same graph. So the solution set before was just the one spot where it was shaded, but now we're looking for the spot where both colors are shaded in. So my solutions would be all of the ones where there would be the purple and the yellow, which would be that red there. That would be my solution then. So just like any other time we're graphing equations, we want to be in slope-intercept form. So we need to have a y equals or the y to be alone before we can graph. So in these first two examples, the y is already alone. So we're just going to graph like we've been graphing since eighth grade. We're going to begin with our b. So I'm going to begin at the 1 for this first example here. And remember, this is like a negative 1. So I'm going to go down 1 over 1. And we want to do this over and over and throughout the entire graph. So then we have to go the opposite direction too. Now we have to go ahead and we have to look at that inequality symbol. So right here is that inequality that I have. That's my less than symbol. So that means if, think back to unit one, that means it's gonna be a dotted line here. And then less than tells me I'm gonna shade everything below the line. So I'm gonna shade everything down here. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to look at graphing the second equation then. So I'm going to begin up at 3, and this tells me it's a positive 2 over 1. So I can do that over and over, and I also have to go the opposite direction. So down 2 into the left one. Looking at this inequality symbol, it has the, it's a less than or equal to, so it's going to have a solid line. And again, I'm shading everything below that line, so I'm shading everything on this side. So my solution set actually ends up being this corner here or that little triangle type shape there because that's where the red and the green both happened. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna look at the next example. Again, we're gonna begin at the positive one. This is now a positive slope, so I'm gonna go up one over one. And I wanna do this throughout the entire grid line, so I have to go the opposite direction as well. So down one and to the left one. My symbol here tells me it's a greater than, so since it doesn't have the equal to, it's going to be a dotted line. And greater than tells me to shade up. So I'm going to shade everything on this side. So I'm going to go ahead and graph the second equation there. So I'm going to start at negative 3. And this is a positive 1 as well, so up 1 over 1. And then I'm going to go the opposite direction as well. Look at your inequality now. This tells me it's a less than symbol, so it's a dotted line. And then less than tells me to shade below. So because that these two shaded regions don't overlap, I don't have a solution for this one. Remember, my solutions are when I have both colors in the region. And since I don't have both red and green in a region, this is a no solution problem. So now looking at example three and four, I'm gonna do the graphing the same way that I did the other ones, except I'm not in y equals mx plus b yet. I'm not in that slope intercept form. So I need to solve these two for y. So for the first one, I wanna get rid of the x first. So I'm gonna subtract x from both sides. I'm gonna be left with a negative y is greater than or equal to negative 3x plus 6. To get rid of that negative y, I have to divide everything by a negative 1. Remember, when you divide by a negative value, it flips your sign. So I get a 3x and a negative 6. So I can go ahead and graph that. I'm going to begin at negative 6. And my slope is a positive 3, so I'm going to go up 3 over 1, up 3 over 1, Now I have to look at my symbol. Remember, we changed my symbol now, so it's a less than or equal to, so it's a solid line. And then the less than tells me to shade everything down, so I'm gonna shade everything on this side. 
So we're going to go ahead and look at our second equation. We need to solve for y, so I need to get that 2x away from that side. So I'm going to go ahead and bring this all the way down here. I'm left with a y is less than or equal to negative 2x plus 4. The y is alone now, so I can go ahead and graph this. I'm going to start at 4. Negative 2 tells me I'm going to go down 2 over positive 1. I'm going to do that over and over and over again, and then I'm going to go the opposite direction. Less than or equal to tells me it's a solid line. And then I'm shading down, so everything on this side will be shaded. So the region with my solutions in it ends up being this little triangle down here. That's where I had both the red and the green. So now we're going to look at example number four. I can't get a y alone on this one because there is no y there. So to graph an x equals equation, we're going to think of this as where is x3? That's what I want to know. Where is that x3? Well, x is 3 right here. But no matter where I go on this line right here, x is always going to be 3. My y value will change, but the x is always 3 there. So I'm going to draw a, a vertical line going through this. And since this symbol has the equal to, we know it's going to be a solid line. And then that tells me that x's are less than 3. So if x is 3 there, all of the values where x is less than 3 are going to be on this side. So now I can go ahead and try to graph my second equation. Again, the y is not alone yet. So to do that, I need to get rid of that x. So I'm going to subtract x. So I'm going to be left with a y is greater than a negative x plus 2. So now the y is alone, I can go ahead and graph that. I'm going to start at 2. And negative x tells me to go down 1 over 1. So I can do that over and over it. And then go the opposite direction. This symbol tells me it's a dotted line. That greater than symbol is a dotted line. And then greater than tells me to shade up. So I'm going to shade everything on this side. So again, the solution region is the region where there's the, both the red and the green, which is this one here. So that's going to be my darkest spot for me. So for examples 5 and 6, I want you to try them on your own. So pause the video, try them, and then unpause the video and check your answers. So here's my answers that I got for examples 5 and 6. If you got something that looks a little different, go ahead and, again, pause the video and come over and talk to me or chat with a friend next to you and see kind of where you went wrong. Okay, so now we're looking at example number seven here, and this is going to be a word problem. So we have Linda, and she's working at a pharmacy for $15 an hour. She then also babysits for $10 an hour. Linda needs to earn at least $90 per week, but she does not want to work more than 20 hours. So we're going to graph a region that shows the number of hours Linda could work. We have two different equations that are going to happen. We have one that is going to deal with the money. So I have an equation that's going to use the 15, the 10, and the 90. And then I have one that's going to deal with the hours. So that's just going to be my 20. So I've already labeled my axes. My pharmacy hours is going to be my x value, and my babysitting hours are going to be my y value. So if my pharmacies are my x's, I'm going to start with 15x. And then babysitting is my Y. Well, I make $10 for my babysitting. And I want to earn at least $90 per week. So I want what I'm going to earn to be greater than or equal to 90. So before I go ahead and I write my second equation, I'm going to graph this one. And to do that, I got to get Y alone. So I'm going to subtract the 15X. So I'm going to get 10Y is greater than or equal to negative 15X plus 90. And then I got to divide by 10. So I get y is greater than or equal to, I'm going to reduce that fraction, and I know 5 goes into both of them. So I get negative 3 over 2x plus 9. So let's go ahead and graph that. I'm going to go and start at 9 and go down 3 and over 2. Over 2, down 3, over 2. 
is going to be a solid line. And then I wanted to shade everything above that line because it's a greater than symbol. So all of that's going to be shaded. So now I'm going to write my second equation. I don't want to work more than 20 hours per week. So the hours at the pharmacy plus the hours babysitting needs to be less than or equal to 20, 20 hours per week. So again, solve for y by subtracting x. So y is going to be less than or equal to negative x plus 20. So I can graph that. I can start up at 20. And this one tells me I'm going to go down 1 over 1. So I'm going to do this all the way through my graph here. Lots and lots of little dots. We're going to look at that symbol then and see kind of what I got going on. It's a less than or equal to. So again, it's a solid line. And then less than tells me down, so it would be all of this side. So my solutions are going to be the spots right in the middle here because that's where I have the red and the green. So last example here, we have Rondell who makes $10 an hour for cutting grass and $12 an hour for raking leaves. He cannot work more than 15 hours per week. We want to graph the two inequalities that Rondell can use to determine how many hours he needs to work at each job if he wants to earn at least $120 per week. So I've again already set up my graph here. The cutting the grass is going to be my x values and my raking leaves is going to be my y values. So I spend or get paid $10 for every hour that I cut grass plus $12 for every hour that I rake leaves. And I want to earn at least $120. So I want that, what I make, to be greater than or equal to 120. So again, we're going to go ahead and solve for y here. So we're going to subtract 10x. So I get 12y greater than or equal to negative 10x plus 120. Divide by 12. So y is going to be greater than or equal to... I know that 2 goes into both 10 and 12, so I'm going to reduce that by 2. So I get negative 5 6 x plus 10. So if we graph them, I'm going to up at 10, and I'm going to go down 5 and over 6. Down 5 and over 6. It's a solid line. And greater than tells me I'm going to again shade above it. So now I need to deal with this 15 hours. I want the hours that I spend cutting the grass plus the hours that I spend raking the leaves. I cannot work more than 15 hours per week. So that needs to be less than or equal to 15 hours. So I can subtract x, subtract x. I get y is less than or equal to negative x plus 15. So I can graph that. I'm going to begin at 15 and I'm going to go down 1 over 1. I'm going to do that throughout the entire graph here. And it's going to look a little bit similar to the one that I just graphed. It's going to be a solid line. And I need my y's to be less than that. So again, I'm going to shade below. So all of my solutions are going to end up being the ones right here in the middle because that's where the red and the green are. So your job now is to complete Unit 2, Practice 2. Make sure that you get it completed before you come to class tomorrow. Ask me if you have any questions.